Morning, Joyce. Well, good morning to both of you and to all of you in Washington. So, as you know, it's been a bit of a bumpy week for our president-elect with more than 50 now House Democrats who say they're going to boycott the inauguration. Still in this city, they are getting ready for all of the pomp and circumstance that comes with the transition of power. Today, the president-elect and the president, the vice president-elect, Mike Pence, will be going to Arlington National Cemetery for the traditional wreath laying. And then on this eve of the inauguration of our 45th president, President, this city is going to be really stepping up the security. Some 28,000 extra security will be on hand prepared for anything that might happen. And you can feel the energy in this city as they are getting ready with more than a million people expected to pour in for not just the inauguration, but for the parade and for the huge march that's coming up uh, this coming Saturday. Again, 28,000 extra security. So as you said, the president-elect has left New York. He is headed here to Washington, and he has been tweeting all morning long, saying that Amer to the American people that together we can make America great again. Not sure what time he's expected to be here this morning, but very, very soon. And again, as we said, he's going to be with the vice president-elect to, again, lay that ceremonial wreath at Arlington National Cemetery. They will then be attending that huge concert tonight, the Make America Great concert. That's at Lincoln Memorial and the public's invited to attend that. The president-elect's expected to make remarks at that concert as well. So every year, Curtis High School, every other year, they um, talk about taking a special trip. And this year, the Curtis High School musical students are going to be coming here to Washington, D.C. In fact, they are at the airport right now on their way here to Washington, their musical department, because they are going to be coming here for the inaugural, all getting ready for a big musical festival that's coming up on Sunday. They put out the call. 103 students said that they wanted in, and they are now on their way to witness democracy in action. <laughs> Music and civics. Normally, the two don't mix, but there was nothing normal about this election year. With a woman and a political outsider doing battle for the highest office in the land, their teachers knew that this inauguration would be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Good. We're there to see the process, to watch it happen, to watch the peaceful transition, and whatever happens in our country, whether your person won or didn't win, this is how we do it, and this is how we, we've always done it, and this is what makes us unique in the world. Still, a few students pulled out, unhappy about the election's outcome. But that opened the way for 17-year-old Nathan, a viola player who believes in the power of music. Everyone is so intertwined, and we, we all love each other, and we can really show that through this contest. And I think it's about community and you know, we've talked a lot about how music brings people together. It's like the universal language. These students don't deny this election season has been a journey. Annie's 18, a first time voter. She spent the past quarter studying U.S. government and could not be more excited to see our democracy up close. We get to see like the new president come in and we get to see it actually like actually happen in front of our eyes. If we didn't believe it before, we will now. <laughs> With just days to go before they go from this classroom to the stage, they're fine-tuning. Perfecting the songs they've been practicing for weeks, so they'll be ready. We could just come together as a community again, and just well, laugh it and like laugh it off and just play some, <laughs> <laughs> play some music. And find our strength in it again and look forward to the future. I want them to, to remember how it feels, the whole experience of being someplace where, where history has happened. And I want them to remember who they were with. This music festival, it's just part of what these students are going to be doing. A lot is going to be planned over the next five days. As you know, they're going to be attending the inauguration, the presidential parade. They'll be going to the Lincoln Memorial, the Smithsonian, and so much more, culminating with that music festival on Sunday, and then their own inaugural dance. So a lot is coming up, 
and uh, they have a lot to look forward to. We'll be talking with them on the other side of the next five days as well. But for now, they have to get here, right? So let's go to Jake Wittenberg, who's at SeaTac Airport. Jake. Hey there, Joyce. Uh, good to see you there in Washington, D.C. What an exciting weekend. You know, it's not every day that I get to a gate and I'm the first one here, but that appears to be the case. A12 is going to be the start of the journey for those students from Curtis High School. What a memorable experience this is going to be. 117 total people were told. All those kids with their instruments getting ready. It should be quite the sight. We're going to be making sure we talk to them here shortly when they arrive for the 750 flight. We'll have more coming up in our next hour, but what an exciting moment for everybody involved. I'll send it back to the desk for now. They are really excited. Can you imagine corralling 103 students? So here in Washington, D.C., we ran into a couple of moms from Woodenville, Carrie Getty and Ann Alecci. They are coming with some other moms. They all have boys in the fourth grade, and they are coming, they say, to march for people they feel are disenfranchised. Tell me why you're here. You all are moms of fourth graders. You're going to be here with two other moms from Woodenville. Yes. Uh, fourth grade boys. Tell me <laughs> yeah. why it's important to be here for them. Well, it's, I love that my son says, I'm a feminist too, and he really yeah. wanted to come. But it's just important that everybody has a voice. It's just so important that we don't just let things happen to us. So it's so important that we show our kids that we have to take action. So they're going to be here with other moms joining some 200,000 others who are expected to participate in the march coming up on Saturday. And of course, marches are happening all across the country. About 50,000 people expected the march there in Seattle, which we will be streaming live online and we'll be streaming live here as well in Washington, D.C. So we'll have it all covered for you from the inauguration, the parade, all the way through the marches on Saturday and the music festival, of course, on Sunday too. A lot ahead. Back to you. Boy, so much to keep track of the next couple of days. Joyce, thank you. We'll check back with you in a little bit. So as she mentioned, King 5 will have complete coverage of the demonstrations in D.C. The march is happening locally on Saturday as well. You'll find our Saturday coverage on live stream.